There's so much water around at the moment coming down because one of my two guests with me is very much involved in water and it's also a subject that's one of my two favourites, seafood and then the gentleman on my left from Marquee Macadamia and I'll introduce him, probably two of the most dear things when it comes to food is macadamias and seafood. And the people that I'm with at the moment is Daniel Adams who is the CEO of the Clarence River Fisherman's Co-op and I love going to fish co-ops and also with me is um, Larry McHugh who is the CEO of Ma Marquee Macadamias which like a lot of the other large co-ops have undergone name changes recently. Daniel, fish co-ops, fishing's gone through incredible reforms in the last couple of years. How important is therefore a co-op in the present climate for fishermen? So it's important to be able to get their product to market. So the cooperative is the consolidation arm of that product. And um, you know we manage the ability to be able to return viable prices back to them. Um, and I guess spread the load of the product across multiple arms versus just one sales chain. Fishermen and all farmers, all primary producers are notoriously private people. They like to work by themselves. At the top of the tree, you'd have to say fishermen are definitely ones that like, apart from their decky, but they don't like letting on, they don't know what's going on. A co-op, how do you find dealing with your members? Because you've got a great co-op, any fish co-op, in my view, is fantastic. Walking in and seeing the, the fresh catch. Do you still find that a bit of a problem to be able to explain to them why they should be still there in a co-op? Absolutely, and I think we're going through a big change in our own business at the moment, and one of the things that we need to keep bringing it back to is the services that we provide them and the facilities that are there for them. You know, basically they're show holders, so that's their business, and trying to get them to support the business and, and see the value in what we do is ever-evolving, so... Yeah. Well, the macadamia, it's Australia's indigenous nut, although, interesting enough, commercially, it was... Uh, US servicemen after the Second World War that saw the value of uh, macadamias and they took them and started growing them in Hawaii. And, but anyway, fortunately, we've grabbed them and pulled them back. And uh, Larry, you as the CEO of Marquee Macadamias, in effect, really, the popularity of macadamias, we can't get enough of what you're growing, can we? No, no, it's been a problem for quite some time with macadamias that um, the world just can't get enough and we've been in an undersupply situation for a long time. So there's a lot of plantings going on at the moment around Australia to try and keep up with that and around the world, in fact. As a co-op, you mentioned plantings. What can you offer a potential grower when it does come to plantings? Because if I recall, there's essentially two varieties of the macadamia that you can eat and then there's extension of those varieties. That's correct. So there's two species, two main planted species, but then there's hundreds of varieties. Uh, so we can offer, offer help to growers who are coming into the industry. We have a lot of experienced people who have been with us for 20 and 30 years who have seen a lot of growth across the industry across that time. And of course, uh, the other thing we can offer growers as they come in is a market for their product. And that's, that's where we specialise in work, world marketing. We export all around the world. Well, we've talked to other co-ops that have gone, have gone going through either rebranding, the uh, casino food co-op is an interesting one. You too have gone through rebranding. When you think about it, macadamias. Like, why do you need to rebrand something that is so good anyway? Uh, we, were very, we were very confusing for our customers because we had three company names and three brands underneath us. So um, we were forever explaining ourselves to our customers. This is the company, this is the, this is the product. So we decided to unite under one, one name, which has been very helpful actually. We've, we've been that way for a year and a little bit now and it's going very well. Daniel, what's with a co-op, and it's always interested me, I, I love going into a local area and walking to a co-op and doing two things, either saying to the co-op, where's the best seafood restaurant in town, because you think they're going to be buying locally, or you go to the co-op and buy fish. A number of other seafood co-ops I've spoken to, they said that, and it's great marketing at the same time, how you walk into any restaurant and you know you'll get salmon and you'll get barramundi. How difficult... and for a co-op, you're involved in the marketing side. Are you finding that increasingly restaurants are willing to listen to what you've got to offer locally caught? Uh, it depends on the level of the, um, the restaurant. The, the challenge is, and our industry's 
trying to enforce a um, an expectation of um, provenance and you know really advertising. You go to a restaurant, you see Flathead. Is that Flathead Australian or is it from South America? Um, and you know, product labelling is something that we're really pushing for behind the scenes. Overall, Australia overarching. Um, you know, the the challenge also is is that um, uh, you know the species are similar, but they are from different countries. You know, and having having a cafe as an example actually advertise on their menu that they are supplying product from a local supplier is always challenging. So, Like all the primary sector, it's getting youth, getting people back in. And to buy a trawler, it's not something like you pull the wallet out of the back pocket and say, I've got a new trawler. A trawler. How can co-ops, not necessarily finance, but what can you provide for a potential new fisher coming in? Yep. Um, look, I think it's just that Um, saying to them, you know, they've made the investment into the business itself. Um, You know, we take away the pain of managing debtors and we take away the pain of logistics and actually working out where they're going to send their product to. So our services are, is that you bring it to us, we'll worry about the, 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 um, the chasing the money, we'll worry about getting it to market and we'll also work out where we can best send it to filter so that you get the best return possible. So... Larry, you mentioned about increased plantings because you can't meet domestic demand, let alone uh, the export demand and the need for it. And just how then, and you mentioned about breeding varieties, plantings, how much would a co-op be like yours advising your growers? Uh, we give a lot of advice to our growers. Um, in, in our company, we have five, five advisors out there the whole time. Um, any, anything from the use of fertilisers through to uh, what, what trees to plant and how to go about planting. Um, we're also fortunate in our co-op to have some large growers who also help the smaller growers coming in and I think that's one of the big things about cooperatives is that you get a sharing of information across growers and now that's proven to be very, very useful for us over time. Because you'd also be sharing what works and what doesn't in certain areas. And that's, that's the big case with macadamias is that once something that works here on the northern rivers doesn't work in Queensland. So there's been a lot of work put into trying to work out you know, what, what works best where and transferring that information around. And it's still going. So it's still going in the macadamia industry. Um, really, we started planting in the late 70s, but we're still a young industry as far as tree nuts go. Daniel, just very briefly, we've gone through some interesting conditions. Are you, are you optimistic? Uh, I have to be. I have no option. Um, There are over 100 fishermen relying on me doing my job. Um, We have a team of 70 plus staff. Um, Optimism is something that, you know, you have to be. So, yeah, of course. (laughs) Larry, there's also the growth and advice around the world. Like macadamia growers in the industry actually work with the South Africans. They're they're growing dramatically. China. Does the co-op model assist in that? Certainly does. Um, our, our co-op has actually just taken on a new partner in South Africa, so we're now a fully grower-owned company with, with a subsidiary company in, in South Africa, so we're extending the grower-owned across the world and using that to get more marketing power so that we can continue to open world market for, for macadamias as they grow all around the world, not just in Australia. So our cooperative is mainly based in Australia, but being able to have product from the world helps us a lot. Daniel, I'm a big fan of do nothing with your fish. Just maybe a bit of butter. Salt and, Salt and pepper. What do you reckon? Is that the way to go? Salt and pepper. Yep, on the barbie. Perfect. <laughs> and Larry, with the macadamia, I know in this area there's the macadamias dip, dipped in dark chocolate. And I must admit, I'm not a big chocolate eater, but a macadamia dipped in dark chocolate. And they would get them, come out with a wasabi and that sort of thing. But really, which is your favourite? Straight from the tree. Nothing like it. So roast them or have them raw, but nothing like them straight from the tree and fresh. Well, it is lunchtime, so I suggest why don't you go and have a lovely piece of fish, maybe filleted, and then uh, followed up with some macadamias to munch on, either before, if you're having a drink, or afterwards. Danielle Adams and Larry McHugh. Danielle is with the Clarence River Fisherman Co-op as the uh, CEO, and Larry McHugh is the CEO of Marquee Macadamia.